Hello and welcome to my last America-based video of the 914 project. I'm going to walk you through the last few tasks, some expected, some unexpected, that I did in the days before I uh, flew home to Barcelona. And then I'll include the video that the EVTV folks took of the pickup of the car by the shipping company. And let me tell you, if you've ever seen Letter Kenny, this guy looks like he could have walked straight off the set in full Canadian tuxedo regalia. Please feed the YouTube algorithm by giving the video a like. If you want to see more like this, click subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of new videos. If you want to chip in on my expenses, I now have Patreon and YouTube memberships. Okay, the car is just finished its final North American charge. We are currently putting only one amp into the pack. It's at the perfect charge level for what I'm calling full. I will disconnect the charge cable. I will calibrate the V2 to tell it you are now at 100% state of charge. So this gauge reads correctly. And then I have to change the AVC board down here to the European version so that when I charge in Europe, the J1772 a Euro version of the resistors and voltages is correct. Then I have to take this handle off and put the J1772 handle back into the juice box for the EVTV folks so they can get some use out of it. And I am, I am this close to starting to ship the car over. I've uploaded a bunch of documentation to the shipping company. All I need to do now, change that board, put the, the grill on, put the trunk on. It's pretty much ready to go. I'm so, so happy. And I have about, I think, six or seven spare days. I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. So two of the very small remaining jobs, I adjusted the windshield washer squirter. They were squirting like here. Now they're up here and they'll get blown nicely by the windshield. And I adjusted the headlights because this one was down and to the right and this one was just down and also to the right. I think wildly out of the area that should be in. So that's all good and the high beams look really good. So those are correctly aimed. Not too much left to do. Here's a fun problem I ran into just days before the car is getting shipped. I can turn the left blinker on, but the right blinker doesn't work. But watch this. connector is garbage that connects the mechanism from inside the steering column to the wiring harness in the car and I can wiggle it on and off just by my index finger my magic index finger is making this work and not work so I get to take this off and go and see what I need to do up there tighten everything up all right there's the 51 year old connector and it looks like the the little copper holdy bits are spread out pretty wide so I'm gonna tighten every one of those up hopefully solve the problem for the long term well check this out left blinky no <laughs> yeah that's the left blinky that's the right blinky nice and solid. I didn't need this a few days from flying away from America. Thanks. All right, with all of the parts on, including the engine lid and the trunk lid, uh, I figured it'd be a good time to weigh it, 
because this is the final curb weight. So we've got all the wheels are on the scale nicely. Everything looks good. Let's go and see what she says. Six forty left front. It's five sixty two left rear, six sixty two right rear, five eighteen right front. So it's I didn't understand this before when let's get see the numbers it appears to be diagonally out of balance in the front the left side is a hundred and twenty pounds heavier but in the rear it's a hundred pounds heavier on the right side and I don't get that. How, how can it be diagonally weighing like that? There's nothing in the car that does that other than the steering mechanism is here. Everything else is symmetrical. The battery pack, the motor is directly in line. The rear battery pack, we've got weight pretty much evenly distributed across the back here. I don't get it, but I tested the, the scale before. I stood on each one, and it gave an, a reading for that corner within a pound or two of the other ones. So this is just what we're left with. Total weight, 2381, and that's going to be the curb weight. We'll have to compare that with what it came from the factory. All right, let's have a look at the specs. The original curb weight out of the factory, 2,094 pounds, 80 horsepower, 94 torques, as Jeremy Clarkson would say. Now with the Warp 9 motor, it's got 96 horsepower. Now that's peak horsepower, 144 volts at 500 amps, which is the most I can push into that thing. So we've got a little bit more horsepower. We're down a little bit on torque from 94 to 70. Shouldn't be that noticeable from a stock car, especially with uh, all the gears. But as I may have mentioned before, uh, the torque is instantaneous from zero RPM as opposed to a conventional gas motor that you got to spin way up the RPM curve. So I don't even use first or second gear. I just start in third gear, third and fourth around town, fifth on the highway, takes me up to about 75 miles an hour, which is, and it's really, really smooth and solid at that speed. I was surprised. But that's as fast as I want to take this little beast. Now, when I did the first conversion with lead acid batteries, 3,380 pounds, and that was on the scale at the local dump in my town in California. That is 1,300 pounds more than the car came out of the factory, which was just brutal. Uh, now, with the Tesla conversion, I did an initial weigh-in before I put the target top, the engine grill, and the trunk lid on. That was 2,274. With everything fully installed, as you just saw it when I read those numbers off, that's 2,381. And that is only 300 pounds more than it came out of the factory. So that's 15% approximately more. I can live with that. With the slight increase of horsepower, you know, balance power and torque, I can live with a 15% weight penalty. That's not including fat old Mikey sitting in the seat. And it's also 1,000 pounds less than when it was driving with the lead batteries. So I am super thrilled about the jump in technology we have from 2009 to 2024. And we are at the place where the lithium batteries are supremely light and energy dense. Oh, I didn't even calculate how many uh, 
amp hours of energy I have uh, pack to pack, I may, I may do those numbers. But this is the result of the weigh-in. We're at 2381 versus 2094, 300 pounds. That's fine. That's like a really good-sized American passenger. <laughs> All right, let's wrap that up. Thank you. Alert viewers will notice that there's a trunk lid and the engine compartment lid, which makes it look very, very, very stock. Unless you walk right up and you see through here, danger, high voltage. And you lift this up and you get a good view of the battery pack and the charging handle, which I hope has enough clearance for the cable that I'll be buying in Spain for my Type 2. Because in the Type 2 countries, you bring your own cable with you. And the cable is encoded with the maximum amount of current it can carry, which is now handled by the replacement AVC2 board, which is deep down inside there, which was the last electrical thing I swapped out and it's held on by magnets which is very cool and the trunk looks like a trunk there's nothing electrical in here but you can see a little bit of the battery pack from here and it's got the charger and the v2 controller usb outputs for easy access and i ordered a new set of rear shocks to make sure they were nice and strong I ordered the actual exact same kit that I bought way back in the day when I first did the conversion. But the funny thing is they didn't fit and I had to cut out more metal here so that the shaft would fit in on the left side and the right side. But after a little bit of surgery that now works, closes nicely, the gaps are okay. Oh, yes, and also to, as part of the car boot up sequence, you have to push the little, let's get some light, that little button right there next to the charging indicator, and it's accessible when you lift this up. So there's no accessibility issues. And that, folks, I think is a wrap. I've got some documentation to do. I've got to upload photographs to the shipping company and the guy that I've hired to walk the car through the Spanish inspection process. But this is done and dusted, short of a little bit of paperwork. I want to thank everybody for their viewership. I think on 32 episodes on my YouTube channel and my Facebook posts and all the support I got from everyone. It's very su su helpful suggestions on some of my problems along the way. And of course, everybody here at EVTV that, that uh, brought me into their family. And I really, really appreciate that with their friendship, their technical support, their expertise and the use of the workshop and all their tools and all their parts, which I will be giving them my Visa card number shortly to pay my final bill. And I've really enjoyed my time here in the little town of Cape Girardeau. It's a very interesting little town with the interesting people and things going on. And I'll be getting on a plane back to Spain soon, but I have cherished my time here. And uh, I have this as my final product, which is the, was the goal back in September. Did I know all of the tasks that I needed to do? Yeah. Did I grossly underestimate the amount of effort it was going to take? Oh yeah. I thought it was going to be a much more straightforward, I'll just upgrade the battery pack and then it'll be fine. Well of course, 32, 33 episodes later, we have a rolling working car. And I'm very happy and thankful for that. So this will be wrapping it up. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to 
put it down in the doodly do and uh, I'll post an update once the car arrives in Spain and I'll, I'll help you see the uh, inspection and certification and registration processes that I run into over there which I'm not looking forward to but the guy seems to be an expert in doing it okay thanks everybody see you later Is it already out there? Take off. Oh, it is, yeah. Just before we wrap up, I want to thank my Patreons, Peter Bouvier and Puppy, for their support. We also just popped over 2,000 subscribers, which is quite a nice milestone for my little channel. All support is greatly appreciated. Hey, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if so, please give it a thumbs up. I see that 81% of the viewers aren't subscribed. Please do, as it does help the YouTube algorithm. Take care, and see you next time.